Hello, everyone. I'm Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. If you're watching from my page, I'm back again. If you're watching from Damon's page, Deco Exchange, hello, and I'm glad to be a guest here. Um, so anyways, we're going to be painting this pumpkin using a buffalo plaid technique. Super easy. Anyone can do it. Matter of fact, I just taught a group of over 2,000 people how to paint it inside the fall door hanger challenge. If you guys remember, I went live here on Deco Exchange um, a couple of weeks ago promoting this challenge. And now we've had several women paint their first door hanger and all of them that I know of had success and their pictures turned out so great. Okay, so let's get started. I have actually painted it white because it's going to save us a little bit of time and headache because the thing is when you're working with painter's tape and doing this technique, you need a nice base coat that is really good and dry. So I painted this about 20 minutes ago. I hit it with the hair dryer to make sure it's completely dry. Sometimes it'll feel dry, but it'll have a, a nice like cool texture to it. That's because the underside of it is still not cured yet. So you need to make sure it's really, really dry. So it started out like this and it's made of MDF. These are, this is quarter inch MDF wood and we painted it white. And now we're gonna show you how to do the Buffalo plaid technique. So what we're gonna do, let me just tell you real quick. What we're going to do is start taping off our pumpkin. So I'm just going to start on the very end of the pumpkin. And we're just going to put down a layer of tape. Then we're going to, and this is frog tape, by the way. And I'm using the 1.4 inch size. This would work well with the 1 inch size also, or with the 2, two inch, just depending on how chunky you want your buffalo plaid to be. Okay, I'm having a hard time getting it started though. I should have folded it over when I finished that spot. Um, okay, Andrea says, I joined the Painters Clubhouse yesterday and I can't wait to dig in and enjoy painting. So thank you so much, Andrea, for joining. And once you join, you can immediately have access to over a hundred painting tutorials and videos. Now I put this here so that I could measure the width. That's just a little hold, placeholder essentially. Um, so you have instant access to hundreds of tutorials and technique videos and things like that. that you can immediately start bin start binge watching and diving into. Oops, I didn't move that up far enough. The reason your paint needs to be really dry, by the way, is because sometimes the painter's tape doesn't stick well if your paint's not fully dry. Um, yes, I've been worrying about you guys, Damon down and Parker. Because down there where the hurricane's at, it's looking like it's going to get ferocious. So please let us know how you are. Sheila joined Painter's Clubhouse today. Yay! We have had over 500 people join as of yesterday. My mind is blown. You guys are so excited to learn painting. I'm so excited about it. And by the way, if you've been thinking about joining Painter's Clubhouse for a while, if you've been following me for a while and thinking about it, and you just haven't taken the plunge and done it, now is the time because next time we open it, which will probably be in spring 2021, the price will be going up. I just want to warn you because I would rather you get in now, lock in the price that it is now. Right now it's $37 a month um, and that is easily, easily doable, especially if you are turning around and trying to sell what it is we are teaching you to paint. It is way worth way more than that. And so uh, we will be increasing the price next time we open it up. And so you might as well lock in your price now because it won't ever be this price again. It's like a sisterhood. We don't, we actually believe in community over competition. So anything we teach you inside the Painters Clubhouse, you're welcome to go out and sell and teach to others using, um, doing paint parties and things like that. And um, so we, we don't like get all upset if somebody copy somebody's idea. We actually encourage that um, because that's how you learn. And um, we are all about community and supporting and encouraging one another. Let's go ahead and hop to it because you you guys are going to flip out when you see me do this. It's so easy. Get yourself a new pack of baby wipes. This one isn't brand new, but I only opened it a couple of weeks ago. So the reason I say new is because they need to be nice and moist. They can't be some crusty dried up baby wipes or they ain't going to work very well. You're probably going to need a couple of them, but we're going to leave the second one in there so that it stays nice and moist. And yeah, I just used that word. Sorry. Um, <laughs> get a little bit of black paint. I like to use an egg carton because it keeps things nice and tidy. Put your black paint in there. 
and then you're going to take your baby wipe and you're going to kind of just fold it up protect your fingers if you want to or wipe your hands clean when you're done doesn't matter dip it in the black paint Ta -da! just like that you're ready for the the mind-blowing part and then you're just going to swap it on hang on i got too much on that first stripe so i'm distributing it and then i'm going to go back and fold my baby wipe over and pick a little bit more up see i got it a little too dark i wanted it a little bit thinner than that so if you want it thinner Keep turning your baby wipe over until you get a new spot and wipe it again. But don't wipe too hard because if you wipe too hard, you'll take up too much paint and then you won't like what you're left with. So just keep folding your baby wipe over. Let me get a fresh spot with black paint because it's still got black paint on there. And you're just going to swipe it on there and try to get them like that one's a little darker than the others. So I'm going to go back to a cleaner part of the baby wipe and just lighten it just a little bit. Boom. Now, your mind's not blown yet, but hang on. Here's the mind-blowing part. We're going to immediately go ahead and peel it up. You can even save your pieces of tape. I'm just going to stick them to the side of my desk. This is a great way to paint stripes, too, if you're interested. It leaves a really cool texture because what we've left behind almost looks like it was painted with... It almost looks like um, fabric, actually. Let me show you up close, the texture. Look at that really cool okay so now we're just going to use our tape and go the other direction oh and I got I lost my little spacer tape I, I wadded it up and threw it away the paint applied with the baby wipe does dry really fast so you got to work quickly work quickly you can't be a perfectionist with it so you lay down my little measuring piece get out another hang on that one's not long enough I need a longer strip Go across the middle here. Now work our way down. We're not going to paint the stem because we'll go back and paint that with uh, brown or something later. Okay, peel that up. Look how fast it dried too. Like we can tape right over it and it sticks just fine. Something about the alcohol and the baby wipes causes the paint to dry super fast. So now just lay that one down and then take up your little tape piece there. Now you're just going to make sure that your edges are sealed on your painter's tape. Just kind of go across there. Be careful that your the paint on your painter's tape may actually still be a little bit damp. So just don't smear it if it is. There we go. We got nice crisp edges now. So now we get to paint the other part. What's the name of the paint group? It's called the Painter's Clubhouse. Kathy, I'm using all DecoArt Americana paints. You can find them at Michael's or you can get them at, at DecoArt.com. Okay. No, I don't actually sell paints. Okay. I've got my baby wipe, fresh baby wipe with a little bit of black paint. We're just going to start smearing it across here. I'm going to fold it over because I don't want it to be too bold on that first stripe. And we're just going to put a light coat on all these areas. We're not going to worry about the stem because we're going to paint the stem in a minute. Okay. I actually wanted it to be just a little lighter than the previous coat that we did. So that's why I didn't keep rubbing the black paint on there. And just look at this. You ready for the wow factor? You absolutely love the buffalo check technique. So look at this up close. Look how rich the texture is. It's so pretty. Look. Look, so pretty. Okay, so let's show you, show you how to add just a little bit more something, something to it. Because I have a really hard time painting anything with only black and white. I like to add a little pizzazz to everything I do. So let's add a little bit of brown. This is called dark chocolate. We're just going to put this on the stem. Um, and we're just going to freehand kind of draw like at the bottom of this we'll just kind of make it come down like there's a little bit of a stem coming down onto the pumpkin so a little brown stem we're going to dry it and do a second coat because it's a little bit opaque it's okay if you missed the buffalo plaid part just watch back from the beginning it didn't take very long that's how easy it was guys 
That's how easy. I got the entire part done in like under 15 minutes. And really, if I hadn't been talking, I could have got it done in like three. Okay, so we've got the stem on there. Now let's go in and let's add um, some little leaves, okay? So we're going to use this color. It's not super bright green. It's called light avocado. It's a really muted green, but I think it'll pair nicely with the browns and the black and white. And I'm going to use a little round tip brush. See there? And we're just going to draw a couple of leaves. Let's see. Let's do one like right here. We're just going to do it's kind of like a, the shape of a, an almond. Just draw the shape of an almond and then just fill in the middle. Simple leaf shape. Doesn't have to be overthought. And then we're going to do the same thing going off the other way. Super simple. I'm actually going to dip my brush in a little bit of off-white and kind of add just a little bit of shading. Like it adds just a little bit of a soft highlight to the top of those little leaves. And then I can dip my brush in just a tiny bit of uh, black and make a little bit of a darker green to add a darker shadow to the bottom side of these leaves. I'm just mixing it with a tiny bit of green to make a darker shadow right there. If you wanted to, you could also take a little bit of that green and you could do some little vines. So dip back in the paint and then just do a fun little vine going across the, the top of the pumpkin. Just like that. Maybe do one going up the stem. Super simple. Kim says, great idea for making wreath signs. So this one is actually not going on a wreath because I am not a wreath maker. I never could make a wreath. And I, it's just not my thing. You know what I mean? It, some people love that kind of stuff. And for me, I just always found it frustrating. And it wasn't a passion of mine. But painting is a passion of mine. So I'm actually going to be attaching this to a welcome porch sign. You know the big six foot tall signs that say welcome down there? This will be the O in the middle of the pumpkin. So one final thing that I want to do to it is I want to add a little bit of a black outline. This just kind of brings the entire shape together. And it kind of just ties it all up. So dip your round brush into the black and then just bring it around the edge of your pumpkin to trace the shape and if it trails off just dip it in and go back over it again and then I want to add just a little bit of um, a shape to right here we're going to add a little bit on top so that it looks more pumpkin-y shaped Just like that. Ta-da! And you're done. All right, I gotta go. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, y'all.